everyone. This is the practice test answers for our final test on energy. The first question here, you're going to just write your answers on the picture. Even though it's not labeled as a number one, your answers will go right here. Tell two energy transformations that are occurring in this picture. Tell the kind of energy involved and tell the point of transformation. Again, like our last test, it's going to be very important that you're very specific about that transformation. So for example, we can have thermal to gravitational as water evaporates and forms a cloud. We can have radiant from the sun to chemical when the sunlight hits a tree. We can have chemical to motion as the deer eats the plant and then moves. There's more or transformations that could occur there. These are just three that are available. Question number one, what will the temperature of the mixed water eventually be? We have two different scenarios here. We have 50 milliliters of 80 degrees Celsius water and we have 50 milliliters at 40 degrees Celsius water. The key to the question here is telling you this, that room temperature in this case is 40 degrees Celsius. So what will the temperature of the mixed water eventually be? Room temperature, 40 degrees Celsius. Question number two. Your friend says that they were on a roller coaster during a power outage and that they got sick because the coaster would not stop. What would you tell this person? You would tell them nicely, things can't go or ever go forever because some of their energy is always going to be transformed into thermal energy, which is lost. There's always some friction that's going to take place. Question number three. Below is a picture of some molecules in a gas. Draw another picture of these same molecules if the temperature is increased. Then tell two ways that the molecules will change when the temperature is increased. Okay, this is a review of what we did on our last test. Here is the picture. It shows the molecules. If we um, heat them, again, our molecules are going to get further apart and they are going to move faster. So you need to have the drawing and the two things that occur. Okay, and for the rest of our test, down on this next question, question four says, it deals with this picture here, and it says, will the ice cubes melt? Explain why. Well, it's really important to not just focus on the sun here, focus on the temperatures. The outside temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius, while the ice cube temperature is negative 5 degrees Celsius. So even though that's cold, it's the warmest temperature here, and hot always goes to cold. So in this case, the ice cubes won't melt. And the reason they will not melt is because heat is actually going to leave them. And if heat leaves them, it's going to leave them even colder than five degrees Celsius. So make sure you're paying very close attention to where your hot and cold source are in any question that asks you about how heat will move. Because this one, if you focus just on the sun and go, oh, warm, you're going to miss the question. And then next one down here, which of the two ice cubes will change temperature faster? Well, it's going to be ice cube A, because in the directions it said that this was in a steel container and this is in a wood container. Well, a steel is a better conductor of heat, which means the heat can leave this one faster. So this one will have the temperature change the quickest because the heat can leave it the quickest because of the metal around it conducting the heat away. Again, think of when we melted the two ice cubes in class, we saw the one melt a lot quicker because the heat got to it quicker. Okay, and then right here, motion is just another name really for heat. Heat and motion, you want to just kind of think of as one entity. Heat is caused by moving particles. And then finally, we've got blank is how heat energy transfers in solids. Now, the answer to this one is it does through conduction, but don't just know conduction. Go back through our labs we did on conduction and radiation and convection because you're going to need to know how all of those uh, transfer energy. You're going to want to know which states of matter they transfer energy in and the like. So make sure that you are really well versed in conduction, convection, and radiation. And that's it. You'll do well on the test.